focus on the leading data strategies and help companies define their strategy. And today uh, we're going to talk about cloud, hybrid cloud, and what is so important uh, for the storage part of the complete cloud solutions or for your data management solutions. We joined with uh, Tom van Dalen from Westpol. Hi Tom, welcome. Hello, thank you. Thank you for having me. Tom, companies are moving to the cloud. What is so specific uh, for companies that they move to the cloud? Well, um, I think the most uh, appealing part is that the idea of growing your IT organically together with your organization. Um, you have a lot of possibilities in the cloud, mainly as a startup, where you can start um, with a very small environment and then grow out towards a very large environment depending on the business that you drive. So this idea of growing organically together with your organization in a very simplistic, holistic manner is what is very appealing to a lot of companies. A lot of services are available in the cloud. Is, is that important or uh, beneficial for startups to use the cloud? Depending on the cloud provider that you choose, you can choose for either a very large solution that is baked in or you can choose for a lot of microservices that you combine together yourself. So the idea of starting really small and just taking the services that you need, pushing your data towards the services that you need is what makes it very appealing. This also obviously lowers the costs for a lot of companies because you only run or you only pay for that really particular service that you need. Tom, the pay-per-use model is as well one of the important facts uh, why companies are moving to the cloud. Uh, what is your vision on that? The pay-as-use model obviously uh, makes sure that the CapEx part is uh, very, very limited. Um, any company can start off with a credit card and get the same services that, they, uh, that any large uh, company would have in the world. Traditionally, we had one type of data load to manage. These days, we have IoT, streaming, analytics, a lot of models uh, that need to have different needs uh, for compute, for storage, in memory. So, uh, what, what is your vision on, on this part? There is a lot of different ways to handle your data that you wouldn't be able to do on-prem because if you're doing analytics, it requires different systems towards traditional IT, let's say for virtualization. So going with your data to the cloud could provide a lot of um, beneficiaries because you can do additional services on your data that you didn't have on-prem. So allowing your data to be um, enriched better, to make better reports, to get more insights in what your business is actually doing is also uh, one of the key um, um, factors why people would move to the cloud. Tom, the massive movement to the cloud, which was an advantage, seems to become a bit a disadvantage in a certain way when we see the growing pains of companies. First of all, once you start using a lot of services in one particular cloud or even multiple cloud vendors, what you get is that there is a lot of dispersion of your data. So this, become, this becomes really hard to manage because of the fact that data is not always manageable from one central point. Also, one of the larger uh, advantages of cloud, namely the simplicity, becomes one of your pain points because of the fact that you can really have shadow IT in your company. People do not longer pass your IT services. They just take their own credit card or another credit card and they start building services to just get faster go to market, which is not always the safest and securest manner to do it also because you don't have really any control of where your data is or how it's managed. We see as well that a lot of microservices was an advantage to a lot of these companies, but yet again we see that this is uh, becoming a disadvantage uh, on a management uh, perspective. Because of the fact that you are trying to leverage the best of everything, this also becomes a problem because once you start using native cloud services, there's not really a way to get your data in a simple manner to another cloud. Also, pushing data out of the cloud often costs money. This is a very simple way for cloud providers to keep you within their territory, obviously. So this is also one of the problems that if you want to use a service of cloud provider X and you then want to link it to cloud provider Y, there is a very large step you need to take to get your data from point A to B. For the cloud, it was the ultimate solution for, for data management, but seeing the different loads, uh, it seems like we have to reevaluate uh, the cloud solution as the ultimate solution. 
cloud providers are very good service providers, but they're not exactly the best of data management providers. So there is a large gap there in what we expect from an on-prem solution versus what we get on a cloud solution. Tom, uh, our data is now everywhere. It's in Google Cloud, it's in Azure, it's in the Alibaba Cloud, it's on the edge. Um, how can we tackle this in the best way? What we are looking for is to find a way to really implement that hybrid multi-cloud thought. So what we need is a data management platform that we can actually stretch across all of these um, endpoints. All of the great uh, and uh, public um, cloud providers, but also the edge and even on-prem because what we tend to forget is that a lot of the infrastructure still is running on-prem. So we are talking about cloud and how great cloud is, but the reality for a lot of companies is that a lot of their data is still siloed inside of that on-premise data center. We have these uh, hybrid clouds. Uh, how do we manage that? Is there a specific platform or uh, the best solution for that? Well, first of all, what it can do for you is it can make sure that you have a really solid grip on where your data is and how it's managed. Uh, it will also give you a lot of beneficiaries in terms of performance because public cloud providers will not always guarantee the same performance on the same volumes or on the same data or on different microservices. So having this one data management platform will really allow you to keep a tight knit grip on your data but also allows you to guarantee performance towards the users that are actually using that data. Now we have uh, all solutions, hybrid cloud, I mean in the cloud and on-prem. So what you are saying is that, for example, you have a data management solution which is in development and you, you just choose the best solution what you have available. Either it's on-prem or it's uh, in the cloud. And if you move that to production, you have that choice again with the hassle what we had uh, if we choose for only one type of solution? Well, it allows you to build solutions to where they are perfectly fit for you. So meaning that even if you start building something in public cloud from a dev perspective, uh, but then you recognize the performance is not that what you want or you need to really tightly knit it with a central database on-prem, it will allow you to actually move that data much faster towards another public cloud or back on-prem where, uh, where it's close to your central databases or your legacy applications. We now have the hybrid solution either on-prem or in the cloud. That means that your data management solution can be developed in the cloud, for example. And if you move to production, you can move it on-prem and without too much hassle uh, if you compare that, if you only do it on-prem or on cloud. Correct, and this is for any company a uh, really uh, valid and useful option to have. To be able to have that grip on your data and to be able to say where it needs to be and how to manage it and where you can exploit it the best is a, is a very, very uh, sought after um, feature. Tom, the hybrid cloud, it's, it's a big challenge. Uh, West Pole, as a trusted advisor, do you have some uh, recommendations as a, as a partner? Well, yes, as a trusted advisor for our companies, when it comes to data management, we can really recommend the IBM platform for smaller companies as for larger companies. We have the traditional on-prem solutions in the storage boxes, but what IBM has done is they've pulled that software out and they've also made it available in the public cloud. That allows for a really holistic and pragmatic approach to manage your data, whether it be on-prem, whether it be in one of the larger clouds or anything in between, which really allows you to implement that hybrid multi-cloud vision. Yeah, we, we, we know these, these terminal environments. Is, is IBM still that, that coding, the prompt line? Well, we, we know IBM from a, from a historical past, from the mainframes and the, the really big machines, but IBM has really done an effort to make their um, systems more available to everyone. So first of all, the user interfaces are really, really um, easy going and easy to manage. Um, we also allow for a rich feature stack. Because this stack comes from the enterprise world, we are now able to provide smaller customer SMB market with that same um, feature stack as you would have on an enterprise system, even in entry or mid-market. I know IBM from, from the software side, from the data solutions, the, web, uh, the Watson platform, uh, but, but the storage part, we, we had uh, sometimes we touched on the storage part. How does that fit in the hybrid uh, platform, what they now are offering? Well, 
the IBM Flash systems is a, is a really um, cool system, I would say, because it provides one platform, whether you are a customer with 10 employees or you are a customer with 10,000 employees. The user experience is the same. It also allows you to grow your platform organically, much like a cloud. So it's able to swap controllers to give you more performance, both on-prem and in the cloud. IBM, well known for enterprise solutions. So are there other uh, markets that can benefit for all, uh, from all that knowledge? First of all, IBM is really committed to providing their platforms across all companies. So that means we currently have street prices available. There are websites that you can access and you can get really um, competitive prices without negotiation for smaller SMB customers. This allows them to also calculate TCO on a very holistic matter. Um, furthermore, because we have this uh, means to the cloud, the simplicity that we crave from the cloud, IBM has also developed something they call a utility model. So actually what they allow you is they also allow you to use that OPEX-based model for their storage and data management platforms. This allows for a really cloud-like user experience with your data management platform as well. So that means you have the infrastructure on your own premises, but you can use that in an OPEX kind of approach. Correct, and it still allows you to manage your data in the way that you would like, both on-prem and in the cloud. So you take it as a service in the cloud, but you also take it as a service on-prem, which, which gives a, a really nice beneficial factor for uh, smaller companies. That also allows for that pay-as-you-grow, organic, grow your IT with your business model that we described earlier uh, in our conversation. Thanks very much for your insights on cloud, on hybrid cloud, on storage. Uh, it was a, a very learningful journey for me. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers.